been hearing a lot of questions around whether or not uh, travelers who are unvaccinated should be traveling this long weekend. Of course, it was a warning from the CDC that said unvaccinated Americans should not be traveling. Uh, and we asked you guys out there, the viewers, our question this week around whether or not uh, vaccines should be required for air travel. It's something that has not happened yet. But of course, we've seen that in some cities when it comes to restaurants and bars. And in responding to that question, the overwhelming majority here uh, did say that you would should need to provide uh, proof of vaccination here to fly 63 percent roughly there to about 38 percent saying no. Uh, and for more on that, I want to bring on Yahoo Finance's Anjali Kamlani here to kind of help put this into context, because Anjali, I mean, we've seen those uh, vaccine requirements, as I said, in restaurants and bars. Air travel has always been one of those things that experts have kind of stressed as maybe not being one of those spots where they have seen high transmission rates. But what do you say about this one? Well, you brought up the point I was going to make, which is they have really said that, you know, air travel has been safer. Uh, there have been studies. I remember specifically uh, sometime late last year listening to some Harvard experts talk about how even within airports, because of the high ceilings, because of the refresh rate of air conditioning um, and the systems that they use, it's actually safer because of all of the systems put in place to help refresh the air and make it easier uh, to prevent the spread of any kind of disease. So that's one part of it. But I'm also thinking about the masks part of it, too, to be honest. I feel like that should be a follow up question, because if you're not going to be vaccinated, then maybe you require masking or I don't know, something like that, even though masks are very uncomfortable for longer flights. I don't know if you've been on one lately, Zach, but it's definitely a question there. I'm getting, uh, you know, all the flight attendants to uh in to, to actually make sure people are wearing their masks has been difficult uh, enough in all this. Uh, but there was an interesting kind of question around the idea of vaccine passports that did come from one response in the poll, Anjali, and that was about whether or not the people who already got COVID don't need the vaccine. And that's a question that we've heard the FDA and the CDC weigh in on because of, uh, you know, the immune response questions around it. You know, it's clear, I mean, if you do both, if you, if you get COVID after you've been vaccinated, you know, you have that immune response in the antibodies. But I mean, that is one question around whether or not vaccine passports work, because there are people out there who already have it. Yeah. And the other way around, too, if you've already had COVID and then get vaccinated, there are studies that show that it provides better protection. So put together, I mean, the vaccine question across the board has been predominantly, it makes sense to require it, to require proof of it pretty much wherever you go. I know that, you know, to your point about there, the requirement is there in some small businesses like restaurants. There's definitely some pushback on that, especially because of the burden that it puts on these employers. It's a different situation when you're talking about federal uh, spaces, federally, you know, run spaces and, and transportation. So I don't know, it's definitely an interesting discussion here, specifically in this country. We know abroad, they're doing it uh, in a lot of places requiring these passports. So it'll just, it, it might just be a matter of time, to be honest, before we start seeing this become mainstream here. Yeah, and different kind of uh, reactions we've seen from different airlines as well. United mandating it for employees and then Delta putting in that $200 surcharge we discussed uh, a couple weeks ago. So, I mean, I don't know. It, it could be maybe a little bit incongruent to have one mandate for employees, but not the passengers. Of course, there are business implications here as well. But Anjali Kamlani, appreciate you hopping on here to chat our social poll this week.